so I have to tell you the story about my journey with seagulls and I, I won't show you on film but there's two seagulls up there on a roof and they are doing what birds do to procreate <laughs> I will not film it for you <laughs> anywho um, the short story is I go for a run each day at 5 a.m. And as it's got lighter in the mornings, um, as we've gone through spring and then to summer, I am greeted by um, seagulls in the sky. And as I pass our local Asda or Walmart, um, there's quite a few birds nest there. It must be you know, somewhere between about 20 and 30. And I found, I found that I started to get a lot more attention from them in the light of morning. So they were beginning to like um, swoop down at me and squawk at me and try and poo on me. And generally were like extremely agitated whenever I was near. And I thought, well, maybe this is just because I'm running, um, you know, running near their nesting grounds. And I'm the only person around at that time. I mean, who else runs at? you know, 5 a.m. in the morning. And um, it gradually got worse until I remember there was, a, there was a few days where seagulls followed me for two miles as I ran up to the nearby village. And um, I literally, there's the same gulls like following me, they're always swooping down at me, squawking at me. And I was thinking, this isn't like super safe. And I must be doing something to really agitate them. And I started to reflect on this. I've been doing the same running route for, for years. And I was thinking, I really don't want to stop it. I live in a very flat town down at the sea. And I run out into the nearest hills. And I just, I would really miss it. It's such a beautiful place. Such uh, beautiful views of um, out of East Lothian. So, <laughs> excuse me. So I decided to Google it, as you do. Um, and I was like, you know, just feeling into my intuition as well, like, what is it that, um, what, there's some sort of lesson here. What, what is this lesson? Like, is, should I just keep going? And so for a while, for a couple more weeks, like I did, I just kept going. I kind of do it scared, if you like, like, just be brave and do it scared. So I was, I was scared and I still got like lots of seagulls. Like whenever they saw me, like even at quite distance, they would go out of their way to come all the way over to me and squawk at me and dive bomb me. So, what I did was, um, uh, yeah, I Googled it and I looked up like what are the things that uh, that, that agitates um, seagulls the most. And after reading a couple of articles, there was two things. One was uh, anything like shiny or fluorescent, and I wear a shiny fluorescent um, jacket because during during the winter it's, it's so that um, Cars can, you know, easily see you, and it also means they don't really need to wear like um, lots of, uh, you know, torches and stuff like that. So, yeah, so I did that. Uh, that was one kind of seagull antagonistic behavior, and then the other was they also don't like anything that has, um, uh, like kind of like an eye or like an owl eye. And that was funny because the hat that I wear has stripes on it and they're like circles around the top. And so I'm sure from above, it looks like a giant eye on my head. <laughs> and so I thought, well, it's getting warmer. Maybe I don't need to wear a hat or this running jacket. Um, and literally since, um, excuse me, I pick up some dog food. Literally the moment that I stopped wearing those two things, the seagulls would come over, they'd take a look at me. I remember the first day, they were still a little bit kind of squawky, um, but they would, they would come over and look at me and just keep going. <laughs> and so ever since then, I've not had one. I've had like some, you know, they'll, they'll make that noise, they'll go, pack, 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 um, which is quite funny. And maybe that's not the best impression, um, but they'll make that noise at you. But uh, just rarely. And they're just not interested in, in me anymore. And you definitely, I definitely had haven't had any gangs of seagulls chasing me. Of course, my son and my family is like, hilarious. The thing is so funny that uh, it's like, I don't know anyone else that gets chased by seagulls. 
It's like, well, I don't know anyone else that goes running at 5 a.m. I mean, I, I pass the odd person, but it's usually a bit later, usually by about 6 a.m. So, yeah, I, I feel like the, the kind of lesson, the, the parable of the story was that, um, you know, sometimes we're meant to do things, you know, scared and, and be brave. Sometimes we're meant to avoid things and, you know, respect nature. And, you know, it also occurred to me that there's a lot of, um, a lot of time that I spend trying to integrate with nature. And uh, so, <laughs> but I also realized that there was this kind of ease and flow aspect to it. Like, the more I can just go with the flow, the more that I would, um, you know, reduce the resistance. And sometimes it's just small changes like that, like not wearing, you know, animal uh, antagonizing clothing <laughs> that makes a huge difference. Um, so, yeah. I just wanted to share that story. I was really guided to share it. And uh, it's funny. And no, I'm not filming any seagulls while they're making love. So have a great day. Sending love from Scotland.